If you were kidnapped, how are you listening to a podcast? Torture. This is- <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Well, thanks for listening. <laughs> yeah. Welcome back to the Shaking Not Scared podcast. Here with you as always, your host, Eric and BB. Today, we're going to be talking about the 2019 movie, The Curse of La Llorona, directed by Michael Chavez. But before we get into that, how are you, Vivi? I am conflicted. Why? I had a, a good weekend, not and a good week. And it was week. ruined by this thing? or what? It, Yes, <laughs> partially ruined by this movie. Okay, I thought that's what you were implying. We went to Noon Whistle. We did. It was really good. It's the first time I went to brewery. They have really good beers that I told you they didn't even have this time. So I found a beer there that... I actually really liked and inspired us to watch this terrible movie. <laughs> I kind of feel bad wasting this good beer on this bad movie. Well, there's not really a movie about rice water. <laughs> you don't know that. <laughs> the Attack of the Rice Water. We could water. have done The Orphanage. Guillermo del Toro is Mexican. That's also a reach, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, I guess so. What was ruined then? Work. <laughs> oh, okay. I was like, me spilling the beer on you again? Oh, yes. You did spill it. Spill. Spill it. You did spill an entire cup of beer on my legs again. I did. Was that on I birthdays? think you cut this out of a previous episode, but you did this at 18th Street Brewery. Oh, yeah, I did. Yeah. That was also an accident, though. Both <laughs> times were accidents. This is a word. I'm starting to think they're on purpose. <laughs> this time a fly was flying in my face, and it just happened to swap my hand in a way that knocked the cup over. And these are like those grady kind yeah, of tables. Yeah, they're like not a solid table. Stuff so falls through them. It was funny because you were just saying that my new shoes look so clean. Your new white vans. Yeah. Back at it again. And you're like, let me correct that and smacked a beer all over my leg. <laughs> well, I corrected it by washing your shoes. You did. <laughs> They're still out there drying. But yeah. how was your week? Well, it was good. I had the same adventures. Same you week as you. Yeah. <laughs> at this point, we're just going to be like, well, how was our week? <laughs> we are one. We're one of those couples that <laughs> doesn't do anything different. You don't even want to leave the house without me. No, I don't. Like, I've never liked running errands by myself and you're the only one in the house well, so i like force you to go because the world is scary yeah new whistle's good you guys should check it out if you haven't caught on already we're pretty much supporting mostly local slash midwest beers that are not that's all we have access to yeah and, <laughs> and cores and pbr and trash well it's not really spooky this drink it's is also not it's spooky shit <laughs> Spooky because it tastes terrible. Well, creepy content. What have you been watching? I haven't been watching shit, so this is new. Oh, no. Similar. Okay, so we watched this terrible movie. And I remember that there is a La Llorona on Shudder that is supposed to be a completely different story. And I tried to start watching it last night, but it was like one in the morning and I am not about that life anymore where I can stay up and watch a movie that late. So I like started it and nothing had happened yet and I had to turn it off. So I'm going to finish that. How long did you go into it? Literally like three or four minutes and I was dozing off. I was going to ask if that time was better than the time equivalent to this movie. If you got through 15 minutes. And it was still better than this movie. It was still better than this movie, yeah. Hard to say <laughs> but i will probably update you on that next week or i'll make you watch it with me who knows and then i just because tiktok tells me everything i must do in my life it is your life <laughs> you live through tiktok i do locked in this house i've been seeing for some reason a lot of stuff about buffy and i was like damn i missed that show i watched it like all throughout college i started watching it again and man i like feel so nostalgic about that show it's probably like my favorite show ever honestly uh, yeah i haven't seen it since i was a kid i actually just recently heard another podcast talk about buffy and how it's weird to watch sarah michelle geller in distress I think it was when we were watching What You Did Last Summer. Yes, literally when she's in Scooby-Doo and she's the damsel in distress, you're like, this is fucking weird. She's Buffy. And then in that movie, she does have a scene where she beats up the bad guy. And you're like, yeah, that's Buffy. I don't know what she did first, if she was a scream queen first or Buffy. But if you just grew up watching her as Buffy, it's so weird to watch her play scared. (laughs) (laughs) Like, I knew the show existed and I knew it was always on when I was a kid. But I was a kid and didn't understand. It was not for me. It was for high schoolers. Then they made that weird spin-off show angel who angel? was less interesting i heard like it has a following like people really love that show i never watched it on principle because i was just a buffy person <laughs> buffy was more interesting yeah and this guy was kind of boring to be fair i thought buffy was hot as a kid so i was like she's what happened to buffy fuck this guy yeah reminds me of the original edward colin like mopey <laughs> like edward and then you've seen interview with a vampire right brad pitt and tom cruise play very iconic characters probably that came along and then like the character of Angel and Buffy and then Edward. Like they were the brooding vampire type. That'd be a good episode, like a mini-sode. We tracked like the trend of moody vampires. Brooding. Brooding. Brooding, just standing, staring, making disgusted faces. 
Small oh, God, I think I'm a brooding <laughs> vampire. I don't think I could ever watch Twilight without ever thinking about I those. try to make you watch it. You, you wouldn't. But I'm talking about the parody online where she walks into the room for the first time and Edward is standing there because the fan hits her and like the, it's implied she that stinks. He, she, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that she farted. <laughs> yeah. And he's like, oh, oh, it's disgusting. Yeah. Like you during this movie. But we have been watching this other anime called Demon Slayer. We've For a been, while. We've been now. slacking on it. It's another anime that's pretty cool. It's got pretty dark themes. Spoiler alert for those who want to watch it. Right off the bat, a family gets murdered and this kid is distraught because everyone but his little sister happens to be alive and he thinks she's okay, but she's actually a demon. This is a world where demons exist. You said they're vampires. They are vampires. They're not vampires. They, they're vampires just because they eat blood? No. Yes, they're and then literally... they cause another being to also become like them. That's a vampire. That's not a vampire. Oh my god. Because there's literally demons okay, that be... look like things out of this world. Okay. That's not a vampire. Hold on. To be fair, we've only watched like the first couple of episodes and their lore. It's called Demon Slayer. They're not vampires. Not Vampire Slayer. Yeah, because there's already <laughs> one. There isn't. It's Buffy. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> We're just talking about it. <laughs> but Demon Slayer, check it out. It's pretty cool in terms of animation, too, if that's your jam. Like, some of it seems like it's animated in CGI, but it's still cartoony. And then the kills are insane. Like, the battles are pretty intense, if that's also your jam. Your so. jam. Sweet. Well, let's talk about the drinks. I'm excited for these, because I don't typically ever go out of my way for things. So, Well, except for Saw last week, I guess. <laughs> oh, yeah. I, you're just, like, taking over the entire podcast at this point. You I'm told me to step it up, it. and I did. <laughs> <laughs> so this week, we brought up New Whistle because of being there this week. So we brought the chata that we loved. You loved, specifically. I loved. The bartender, if he hears this, it was funny. He pointed out how we say it. Well, you say it because you, you ordered it, but he says he calls it chata, and that you say it. Chata. Which is different. Sure. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we get the vibe they don't get a lot of Latinos there. But someone had to know to make this drink, right. so. <laughs> <laughs> well, I told you Los Comales, which is another Los Comales. Mexican restaurant that I've gone to all my life. For some reason, the one next to us makes me blow my butthole out like <laughs> that just means that they use spices <laughs> they use a lot of spices why is it spicy <laughs> yeah. yeah so we got chata from noon whistle and then we also have la llorona which is also not typically a mexican drink because i tried this at disney epcot in mexico the mexico pavilion they had a la llorona drink i had it with my sister nelly i didn't exactly use their ingredients they had some fancy ingredients oh, that we stuff i'd never even heard of would have to go to the store for the ingredients that I used are a little modification of that, and I hope that tastes about the same. You well, served it in, like, coffee mugs? Well, because that's how they served it to us. Not these little coffee mugs, but in these, like, tiny glasses with little handles on them. Because you're supposed to sip mezcal. It's mm-hmm. not like a chug with water or other things. I don't like think tequila. anyone chugs alcohol with water. I do. Oh, you do? Yeah. Tequila. Mixed together? Tequila and soda water. It's, like, a very commonly drunk chug shot chug it? <laughs> like yeah, a beer? I'm thirsty. <laughs> oh, yeah, you have a bad habit of chugging White Claws because you just, like, see it's them water. as LaCroix. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, stop doing that! But this is called La Llorona. Do you oh, want to taste it? Sure. I'm nervous. This tastes better than the one in Disney. Really? Yeah. Best way I can describe it is like an old fashioned, but with a little coffee in there and, you know, mezcal instead of whiskey and tequila, because I think it's both. The way I made it was an ounce of tequila, an ounce of mezcal, and then an ounce of creme de cassis, and then some dashes of bitters. It's simple. I shook it with ice and then poured it into the glass and mm-hmm. yeah, it's chilled. It's not bad. Or not shook it, stirred it. Would you say it's shaken, not scared? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Scared, not shaken. This is not bad. I, like I would it? give it a three out of five. Yeah, it's pretty good for you. As a, it's neat, no ice. Yeah. I like it too. I'd give it a four. Okay. Are you ready to talk about chata? Let's do it. Okay. Just as a description from their website, it is our take on a refreshing Mexican, 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 Mexican beverage or chata. This Belgian wit contains classic notes of spice clove and coriander with flavors <laughs> of sweet cinnamon and creamy vanilla. Beautiful. Okay. Where's the rice? <laughs> Where's the flavor? <laughs> no, that sounds good. Sounds about right. Vanilla. I mean, as long as it's got cinnamon, that's pretty prominent. And Cinnamon and vanilla. vanilla is literally all you need for... And rice. <laughs> I mean, well, yeah. <laughs> and, and water. And rice and water. <laughs> and, you know, a dash of this, a dash of that. <laughs> Some mom effect a little bit of grandma effect on your horchata really? i think i'm thinking of arroz con leche <laughs> i'm like really because i've made horchata in the house <laughs> you've never said it had mom effect i'm a dog mom oh no it got on the mic it smells good though it smells really good yeah it actually kind of smells like cereal well cinnamon toast crunch yeah right 
A little ASMR. Do you have something to say, Bear? Right? Just, it kind of smells like cereal. Like, kicks. I love kicks. You say that everything tastes like kicks, and kicks literally had no fucking sugar or <laughs> anything good in it. I fucking love kicks. <laughs> what is wrong with you? That is a sad childhood. It's not. I love kicks. It's not sad if you love it. It's not sad if you love it. That's good. Describe it. It's actually pretty true to the description. You taste the, like, cinnamony sweet mm -hmm. vanilla notes. Any difference draft versus canned? Mm. It could be because, like, we were also out. And it was hot. In the heat, and it was like really refreshing. I would, so I would say the draft maybe a little better. I saw this tool. I think it's a huge waste of beer. But you know how like cigar, I don't know what they're called, but you cut the ends and it's like a clip thing. I think it's just called like a cigar cutter. Oh, is it? Okay. I worked in a casino. English wasn't my first language, okay? I poured it like all out and like there's like this weird effect going on. Oh, I can't turn it. It's, it's just cloudy. on the side. Yeah. Do you cloudy. see it? Yeah, I do. Yours doesn't look like mine. It's okay. Different batch. I think it just like sat. Yours has meth in it. It has. Chata. Mm, that's the rice, right? <laughs> but it's like a thing. You can cut the top of your beer. It looks like a huge mess because it does all sound the demo like videos, it. all of them, it, it's like, <laughs> and like all this beer just pours out of the top. <laughs> You're left with like half, half the beer. of your beer. Yeah. <laughs> and it says that it's supposed to do the same effect as drinking your beer draft, which I don't believe. No, I think once it's been in the can, it tastes different. I even drink canned wine. Just for the lulls. lulls, just to say I drink it. It is never as good as bottled wine. What would you rate this? I would rate it a three and a half. I really love this. And to me, it's a five out of oh, five. Man. Whenever I go somewhere and they're like, horchata this on the menu, I'm like, I got to try it, but I'm going to be disappointed. I know I am. It happens a lot with horchata ca cafe. <laughs> I'm like the dude in the movie now where I got to speak Spanish <laughs> in the middle of my sentence. Horchata coffee. Those are always like, meh. So I, I see it on the menu. I'm like, it's going to be disgusting. I got to try it. And this was like really good. I do agree. It's good. If you've ever tried like the blue moon horchata. They have that? Yeah, this is definitely way better. If you hate that, you might love this. Logically, okay. it's really good. Better on draft. Yes. So cheers. Come out to Noon Whistle. That ends our drinking segment. So we got our IMDb overview. Are you ready for this? Mm -hmm. In 1970, Los Angeles, the legendary ghost, La Llorona, which is how they pronounce it in this movie. La 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 Llorona, <laughs> basically, <laughs> is stalking the night and the children. Ignoring the eerie warnings of a troubled mother, a social worker, and her own kids are drawn into a frightening supernatural realm. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> I was going to say suspenseful, and that was not the word. Okay. Into a frightening supernatural realm. Their only hope of surviving La Lorona, deadly wrath. <laughs> <laughs> The on their only hope of surviving La Llorona's deadly wrath <laughs> is to stop laughing. That's how they say it. Okay. Is a disillusioned priest who practices mysticism mm. to keep evil at bay. The priest. Oh, yes. The ex-priest slash curandero. <gasps> <laughs> With his black magic. With streets. his huevos. <laughs> his black huevos. <laughs> That's true. That's what happens. We're not laughing. making this up. <laughs> you want to know what IMDb rated it before we get started? Five. A 5.3 out of 10. Oh, that's better than I thought. That is very high in my opinion. Yeah. So, let me set my timer because Eric is going to summarize this beautiful movie. One minute. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. Ready? Mm -hmm. One, two, three. Go. So we're introduced to this field with a bunch of kids and this lady in a white dress. And then it's like happy-go-lucky. There's emphasis on this necklace for some reason that plays actually no reason at all at the end other than to just have this moment. And then later the kids find, oh, look, everyone's disappeared. And then the kid's like, what? Where's my mom? And then he goes and finds out his mom's like killing them. And then the kid dies too. So then it's like fast forward to the family, introduces the kids, introduces this lady as a social worker. There's some kids who haven't been seen in a while. They go find out what's happening with the lady. The lady's like, ah, what the hell? They think that the lady killed, there has been like sequestering these kids. And then they end up taking the, the kids to this place the kids end up getting drowned because they're like found in the middle of the night and so then they take the lady and then the lady's like oh you the Yorona, you took her from me and it turns out that she was actually trying to protect them and so then later on it turns out that all the kids are being affected by la Yorona. so then they all have these burns on their hands they're slowly seeing everything they end up getting the have uh, having trouble and so they go to the priest the priest tells them like hey if you can believe this you can believe that so then he goes and sends them the curandero the curandero has these black eggs who he's like yeah i can save you guys and then he does and he has this whole hero moment and then they're all at the house the Yorona is like trying to get them and then there's necklace. Hey. Oh no. <laughs> Take a big gulp. Okay. Uh, you lost. <laughs> Fuck. I, I don't know what sound there. to use either. <laughs> 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 that one. That's the one we're going to use. Well, you said not to show you the time and you were like still like in the beginning and it was at 40 seconds. Oh, man, it's so hard. I tried to give enough detail. Do you want to just finish it off real quick? Yeah. Well, no. We'll just dive in with okay. our story. Yeah. Well, no. <laughs> no. Well, yeah. 
No, but yeah, but no. No, but yeah. Apparently that's a Midwest thing. No, but Isn't yeah. Isn't everything. Yeah, but no. No, yeah, no. Yeah, no, yeah. We should uh, really try to branch out to non-Midwest things. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was my brief. I guess I failed. Do you have fun facts, though? I do. So the fun facts are not related to the movie or its film. At all. At all. <laughs> <laughs> But it's actually, I wanted to cover the real story of La Llorona, which, because as you know, we are Hispanic, Mexicans. 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 I do want to kind of clarify. Where did that joke come from? From South Park. Ah. Butters is the king of the Mexicans. Oh, really? Because it's a book, isn't it? Like a... It's a book or something like that. I would have and to look it up. And it was a play on that book. I thought it was a joke on how you can't say Mexico. You have to say Mexico. 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 Just an FYI up front, this isn't necessarily the main story of La Llorona. I'm going to give some background, but there's, you know, just like any other urban legend, there's a lot of stories that lead to what the like, current understanding of La Llorona is. Yeah, but I, I imagine like every region has its own details or yeah. different tweaks to the story. We could talk about La Llorona as we knew it growing up. It was just this lady who, if you strayed too far from your family, La Llorona would go get you. Kind of like El Cucuy and the Boogeyman. Which we talked about before. You hear a crying lady and you should probably go home because you're going to get killed. Simple as that. Ready? Ready. All right. So this comes from Matador Network. The legend of La Llorona describes a woman with long black hair dressed in white and with a veil over her face that appears at night in the middle of streets yelling and crying for her children. She's most associated with Mexican culture and even has some similarities to several Mayan, Zapotec, and Purepecha deities. Some even say she's part of the myth of the fall of Tenochtitlan, Mexico City for those of you who don't know. For those of you who don't know. <laughs> well, they probably don't. <laughs> <laughs> the most notable story is of Siwakotl. I'm not going to pretend I know how to say these, but I'll try. You're doing pretty good because I would not know how to do it. <laughs> the most notable story is of Siwakotl, who began appearing over Lake Texcoco around 1500. Moctezuma's priests believed Siwakotl had come from the water as a premonition of what was to come to the empire. Mm -hmm. Apparently there's a bunch of premonitions that were sent to or were seen by Moctezuma's empire that signified the fall of his empire. It was like so a bunch she's of... like an omen. Yes. So she's one of several Many. warnings for Moctezuma. My favorite thing now is that we call Montezuma's revenge getting diarrhea. I mean, are they wrong though? <laughs> <laughs> There's some backstory to that. There is there? an actual yeah. backstory. We'd have to probably look at that. <laughs> they would see the white figure with her hair combed and always heard her yell and scream, my children, where will I take you to escape such terrible fate? I like the detail about how she always had her hair combed. I feel like a lot of the legends emphasize that she was beautiful. But so this phrase, my children, where will I take you to escape such a terrible fate, is important because imagine you're in a town and these people are hearing this and they're just like, what the hell? What is this? What is she saying? What does she mean? Later, although terrified by her, it wasn't until after conquest by the Spanish that the priests finally understood this was a warning. Oops, a little late. So, Siwakotl can always be seen screaming and crying through the night, is always seen in the presence of water, and is a patron saint of the Siwateteo, who are seen blowing at night. The Siwateteo are women who died giving birth and are seen at night on specific days of the year in the middle of streets seeking to murder children, or are fatal to children, whatever that means. I think it means murder. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like there's so many like origins, different versions of this. Maybe we could like do a deep dive for a mini episode. All the different things that could be La Llorona. See what could. It's kind of cool. No, for sure. Yeah. So did you know that? Yeah, no, I didn't. I think we talked about it before that we don't know that much about our own deities and gods. Like we're taught Greek mythology in school. We're taught Norse mythology. Egyptian mythology. Egyptian mythology. We're not taught Latin American mythology. We got to dive into this thing before yes. it just goes rotten. <laughs> before it goes rotten. This film's already rotten. That's what I mean. <laughs> so we start in Mexico in 1673. Don't get me started on this intro song <laughs> because I truly hate it. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, what's a random ass Mexican lullaby? That we can kind of make sound creepy. Like like in all the other American horror films lately. They've been doing it a lot. So they were like, let's do the same thing for this Spanish song. I don't know if it's just growing up hearing this song as a lullaby. This is not creepy. It's just annoying. It's just a lullaby, but like yeah. the way they try to make it eerie, I'm just like, Stop. And, and you know, they didn't, right? Like it's just a lady singing it normal. Slowly. And they're like, it's already eerie because she's speaking Spanish. <laughs> Oh, foreign language. They're not going to know what she's saying. It already sounds cute. creepy. There is literally a song called La Llorona. Yes, which is they cute, though. That, that song is dope. It's a nice song. Better than this, what they tried. It's imagine. not creepy, I guess. No. But you could sing it, like, super slowly. La Llorona is, like, depressing. There you go. <laughs> this is not a happy movie. No. It's strange because... 
they present who La Llorona is and she's like dressed like a bride the yeah. entire time, even after like having been married and having had her kids. But, you know, the kids are like there as a happy family with the dad and her and it's two boys and they're playing like ring around the rosy or something. And then the kid opens his eyes and everyone's gone and he's like, where is everybody? And then he like walks towards the river and in the river he sees his mom drowning. Don't forget the emphasis on the necklace. Oh, yeah, they give her a necklace before they start playing games. Well, for no damn reason. It's just like, my necklace, this is great. And then later it just plays this like tiny ass effect Roll in this on movie. her. Yeah. That makes no sense. But, yeah, you know, but- kid walks in on his mom murdering. For some reason, her face is covered while she's murdering. I know you hated this film. There yeah. are some cool effects, even though you were like, but it's the same thing as always. I'm like, yeah, I know, but it's still cool. Like when she looks up through her veil. It's like her face gets almost like pressed through the veil so you can mm. see like a shadowy face in it. So to imply that she's not herself. Later we learn her backstory. It's which, not much of a backstory. It's not much of a backstory. It also doesn't explain why she is a malevolent spirit, spirit. that has power. Otherwise, this would just happen all the time. It's because she was beautiful and not ugly. Oh, good. That's so beautiful. <laughs> People get power. Yeah. Huh? Obviously. Is that what you're trying to say, La Llorona? Michael Chavez? Trying yes. to say beautiful people get power when they die? They get demonic <laughs> power when they die. Did I already say that she kills a kid? Yes. That's implied. <laughs> no, you did. I yeah, she's trying. killing the kid with her veil over her face. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then cut to the 1970s. They're just all getting ready for work and school and shit. And it's so, chaotic. The it's typical like, montage. Everything's good. We're having fun. We're a happy and, family going to work and school. Yeah. The mom's a social worker. She's on this case. We're kind of just throwing at everything right away, which is good. We find out that this family hasn't been seen in a minute. This lady who has kids. They wanted to put a young social, social worker on They put this kind it. of like side story of that yeah. the young social worker is better than her and she's getting old. Just to tell you that her husband has died and she's like a single mom now and it's tough just to paint that picture. <laughs> they do end up going. She gets a cop to go with her. That she, she doesn't, doesn't want, want the cop there. They end up knocking. We see this lady, Patricia, who opens the door and she seems very disheveled. Her face is very like dry and distressed. She convinces her to let her in and obviously immediately it's creepy. She's literally got no lights on. It's like... All candles everywhere and like the social Writing worker shit everywhere. immediately is like, did you start drinking again? Forget to pay the power bill. <laughs> it's like, damn. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> we find out that she's like locked the kids away and she's speaking in Spanish saying things like, she's coming, we can't let her in. But you, I guess, if you don't speak Spanish as the audience don't know that. The point of this whole scene is to paint the picture that Patricia seems crazy and has been sequestering her kids. Yeah. And later we find out through several things that happened that she was actually trying to protect them. But in this scene, Anna thinks that she's holding her kids hostage in this closet with a lock and all this writing. And an eyeball painted, which I'm assuming is like the evil eye. She gets the kids out of there, but the mom's like freaking out saying you've endangered them. She takes them to like a foster home situation. It looks like to be in a church. And she's like, they're going to be safe. I promise you, you're going to be safe. She notices these burns on their hand. There's a pattern to the cut. Or yeah, burn. it looks like someone has grabbed you mm-hmm. for sure. <laughs> we seem very bored with this movie. <laughs> uh, yeah, because it's just like whatever it tries to build, it fails, I think. Are we being too critical? Because we are. No, I think in general, this movie has negative reviews. Okay. It's trying very hard to tell a story that it doesn't know too much about. So they had to add this other form of fear factor to it where it's a crazy parent. Oh, no, it's just this thing that's haunting them. We even get, the, it's not haunting the house. It's haunting It's haunting the people. you. Yeah. It becomes recycled. The effects are cool at some point. It's still a lot of recycled effects. It might just be this Warrenverse thing, which we'll talk about later yeah. as well. That it's only part of the Warrenverse for one tiny detail. One damn reason. I am actually very disappointed in James Wan for producing this. <laughs> After this whole story happens, she helps them by going to this, it seems like a place for kids. It was like San Agustin's Center for Children or something like that. Anyway, she gets home. The daughter is watching Scooby-Doo. And the and whole time she... I was also thinking that this is Velma. Yeah. Uh, who who plays Anna? Oh, we got Velma and Daphne in yeah. both this episode. <laughs> and true. we literally and always talk about <laughs> M- Matthew Lillard. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but the husband was a cop. We learned that he's dead. The kid's playing cop, so you learn like this kid's sad because his, his dad's gone. Again, it's just to build a story that they're a family in turmoil like we always see in <laughs> movies. The cop had this necklace from earlier somehow. I was it was confused. in his desk, right? Was it that seemed... the same necklace? I don't know because later she says she pulled it off of her. Right. So if, if it was the same necklace... It could just have been like a different necklace. I don't, well, I don't know. Well, then at the end of the day, it doesn't even matter. So Does what was matter? the point of yeah. emphasizing the necklace she was looking at? After she gets home and kind of like puts her kids to rest, 
She gets a call in the middle of the night saying that the Elvers boys were murdered in the middle of the night. The kids, after she found them in the closet, were like, she's going to get us. And so... She keeps thinking they're talking about their Patricia. Mom. But they're talking about the Yonana. So when they're in the little building, they keep hearing whimpering in the hallway. The older brother is walking into the hall and the little brother follows. And so the older brother is like just standing there weird in the middle of the hall. And this scene is... It's creepy because hallway scenes are always creepy. You know what it reminds me of? That scene in Scary Stories to Tell in the Dark where the kid's in the hospital and then the blob of a woman comes. Oh, yeah. Except that one was more fun, I think. And they're going to meet them in the middle, right? Yeah, yeah something okay. like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's true. But, yeah, so the, the kid is, like, standing there weird and he's pointing at the, you know how, like, in parking lots they have that big orb thing that you can see around tight corners no he, no yes you do i never look in those you don't drive yes oh, this is i'm kidding i'm gonna crash <laughs> i'm kidding i know what they are <laughs> but I just he don't points use at them. it and it cracks for some reason mirrors crack every time that he oh, runs yeah. around is it the notion that she just can't like see herself of what she's become that's what the veil is for so yeah, she can't see her own reflection in the water wow fixed it figured it out so would we get married again in august it's so you can't see me it's so that i can't see you in the water <laughs> 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 What? <laughs> what in the... <laughs> I don't actually get the point of veils in weddings. Like, you don't know what your wife fucking looks like. I mean, is that what they used to mean? I think so. It was like... Surprise, surprise motherfucker. Surprise, <laughs> motherfucker. <laughs> yes. And that's basically what mirrors are to her. <laughs> <laughs> Seeing who she's going to get married to? Yes. Herself? Love herself. <laughs> so she's, this you gotta is love the, yourself So the first. actual story is the story of Narcissus. <laughs> yes. Again, we're back at Greek mythology. Yeah. But so that yeah, the kids die because there's this puddle on the yeah, floor. Yeah, the kids just die. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's this puddle on the floor, and then the little kid's like, "What the fuck?" and looks up, and then she's there and kills them. The mom gets a call in the middle of the night and says, "And takes her kids." Why? Why? Well, well she's the same mom, I guess. But she's got friend cops. Yeah. You should be like, "Hey, hey can, you... can one of your cops come stay with them over here so they don't witness traumatizing death?" Especially if you're going to call me in the middle of the night to come to this scene. Do social workers get called like this in the middle of the night? I don't night? know. Let's ask my tia. She's one. We can ask her. If you're a social worker, though, let damn, us know. good on you. Let us know if you get called in the middle of the night to see these type of things. Isn't there this thing that like, social workers don't get as much credit as they should? Because they do a lot of the like the work that cops don't do. Yes, I do believe that social workers are definitely undervalued. And then there's like documentaries. I don't think you watched this one, but it was like uh, really popular a couple years ago on Netflix where social workers completely dropped the ball on this kid and he ended up murdered by his parents. Mm. But I think that just reflects one terrible case and, and actually emphasizes that they're really understaffed, really underpaid and things like that. It sounds like a lot of work, but... Yeah, she goes to this crime scene. Kids are in the car. Because she brought these kids to the crime scene is why the rest of this movie happens. Yes and no, because we find out that Patricia's like, it's your fault mm. my kids are dead, so I prayed. I prayed so hard. To I didn't pray to God, I prayed I to, pray her. to her. They make her look hysterical as fuck when they put her they in the car. They really make this character not likable and conflicting. I, I have thoughts about Because then later she has a hero moment? Yeah. <laughs> Okay, I pointed this out already. Why is she dressed like a bride this entire movie? She's got her little flower crown mm -hmm. when the kid first sees her. And we get this like whole scene of her trying to like unlock the car. And she's a ghost that gets stopped by doors. The only ghost I've ever heard this being a problem for. So she... Is this a border joke? No, because this scene has a fence and she was able to get past it. <laughs> what? Yeah. And but doors stop her? I don't know what that means. <laughs> She's able to jump fences, but... But not open doors? That is actually very deep. <laughs> you can't open doors for opportunities, but you can <laughs> to get here. But the scene with the kids is kind of quick. It's the Yorona's there in the corner, kind of it style. It's like crying in Eating the shadows. Eating a child or yeah. something. <laughs> and the kid's like, what the fuck? And he gets closer, and then she's like, I want you, my kid, or whatever, and then runs at her. Kid runs scared after having gotten burned by her because she grabs his wrist. That's the first time he gets his mark. Seems like she marks her victims. victims. And he runs back to the car, freaks the hell out of his little sister, and he has this battle with these rolling windows and the locks, and it's just a very long scene of this. And you don't really see... I think windows. you see her, like, once, and it's not, like... I don't know. It's it's no suspense buildup in this film, like, at all. It's just... It, here it's she just, is. Here you go. I think that's what I'm... Like, okay, bad storyline aside, if it was maybe actually scary... Or had some interesting new effects that we've never seen before. I think I'd be like, okay. But it doesn't have that. It's a lot of recycled stuff. I would say she looks like a recycled version of Valak from The Nun. The Nun when, and, in white. And Conjuring 2, yeah. <laughs> 
None of it was terrifying. None no, none of it was scary. But we see her and she's in one of the windows and freaks out. The little girl's not sure what he's seen. And then this is when the mom gets in the car and they go mm-hmm. home. The next day, she's like witnessing this funeral. Funeral. Because I don't know if like, you've ever been to a funeral where the curanderos, curanderos they're staged sage sage at you. <laughs> not that it doesn't happen. I'm just saying I've never <laughs> been to one. I mean, yeah, I can't say that it does yeah. or doesn't. Maybe somewhere in Mexico. Tell yeah. us if it does. I don't know. I don't fucking know. Okay, yeah. so like... This is what bothers me so much about this movie. Like you said, this film could have been way creepier if it actually took place in Mexico. There's like really creepy areas in Mexico you could have filmed this or whatever. And then my other biggest issue is that this is our folklore, right? Latino folklore. Why is the protagonist of this movie a white family and the supporting cast all Latinos that are either villains, jokes, or like this curandero that ends up being like not that great no he's an asshole too but yeah yeah no i agree i think because anna i think she's italian and i think it's implied like well she's hispanic through her husband who was hispanic so that makes her kids hispanic so but why did you our, have to do that in the first place so that was our biggest reach to say this is the la llorona affecting this family i think it had been it cool been if it was way in mexico done. And yes. in spanish the whole thing but the whole movie in spanish yes rec was in spanish and it was a damn good movie there is a ton of good movies in Spanish. Like, I just don't understand the... It just vilifies the people that this story comes from. And the director, I don't know if he's Latino. The whole scene where the curandero's talking about how he does his stuff is just a whole joke scene. It's that, like someone, like an intern, did the bare minimum research on what Santeria, San, Santeria is. <laughs> Santeria? Santeria. The Sublime version? Yes, yeah, Sublime's <laughs> version of Santeria. They listened to that song and based their entire movie oh. on this. I could talk to you about some Santeria and Curanderos. But we get exposition priest, Father Perez. The priest calls it a smudging and says that he's cleansing the people of negative energy because of what happened around this whole killing. Mm -hmm. He says that if they can believe in that, they can believe in this. I was like, okay, bro. So they can believe in witchcraft so they can believe in God too? Which I told you was bullshit because... There are plenty of religious people who also believe in witchcraft. There is, but like so many people are like, do not bring that shit into my house. That is of the devil. Don't even watch a scary movie in my house. You are inviting the devil. That family believes in it, so don't associate yourself with them. Yeah, I've seen a lot of that. (laughs) My family didn't particularly care if I was smudging the house or something. They always just thought it was weird and let me do that. But But isn't there this cross tattoo or this cross scar to protect yourself? Protection tattoo? Which is like witchcrafty? Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Hmm. Hmm. I'll let them believe that if they believe in God. You gonna let them believe that? You bro? gonna let them? They have a choice. They didn't ask you. <laughs> yeah, but this priest's whole point—the entire point for his existence in this movie—we were surprised by this because we had seen this somewhere else. That the curse of La Llorona is a part of the Warren verse, although they're not anywhere in this at all. The only nope. thing that connects them is this priest. That's it. He gives the backstory of La Llorona, and he. It's like, I didn't used to believe in this entities, but I I came across a doll and they show a quick scene from, I think it's the Annabelle movie. Only connection to the Warren verse. That's it. And like, maybe there's kind of like a mention when she goes back later and she's like, I need help. And he's like, well, we can ask these people, but they kind of busy right now. So we're going to give you the knockoff version. The same old recycled version of that. We need approval from the Vatican. After so many of this situation, can the Vatican like reevaluate their damn requirements. Can they like get a system going where people just submit their request online? <laughs> Could you imagine what that would look like? Everybody and their mom submitting my toilet doesn't flush. Demons. I think there's a demon in the toilet. In my body. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that I released into the toilet. My revenge. Just straight up haunting Why do we always talk about poop? Because <laughs> you, you have Crohn's. Yeah, I, I do. Okay. <laughs> anyway. After that's it. <laughs> anyway. I got anyway. nothing else to talk about. <laughs> Do you know about La Llorona, the weeping woman, story of a beautiful woman? Oh, is she beautiful? I didn't know. <laughs> Got with this ranchero, had some babies. She found him cheating, and she said, no, 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 I'm killing your babies in revenge. In a fit of jealous rage. And out of guilt, consumed. Did, did he say how she dies? I don't think he specifies. I think he just says that as a result, she's consumed by guilt. Kids told to listen by yeah, using he, La Llorona. Yeah, I mean, yeah, that part's true. <laughs> we were. I was. So he gives her a cross and his eyes. It's that trope of these films that are like, oh, you're not religious? You better stop being religious. Slide. Slide that over there. A tiny little rosary. Just going to give you like a little bit, like a drug dealer. They give you a little bit and you get hooked and you come back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so this is the part where I thought the scene was cool. The little girl is also 
affected by La Llorona mm -hmm. because she's having a good old time outside by herself with an umbrella. She opens it and La Llorona's there and she puts it down and she's not there. Then the umbrella blows away, gets taken to the pool, and then when the little girl approaches is when the Llorona jumps up at her and also burns Grabs her, her. her. Anna does a really bad job as a mom and is very much like, what happened to you? And she's like, nothing. And mom's like, okay, cool. Here's this really boring story. Lecture about not uh, falling or and whatever. I'm not going to treat you either. I'm not going to treat these third mom, degree burns you have on your skin. My mom would give me another burn for having burned myself. And not telling her. And not telling her. Yeah. <laughs> she, she's a great parent. Don't worry about it. They invite the cop over for dinner. It seems like this guy was her husband's partner. Best friend. Or her best friend, yeah. <laughs> he brings info about Patricia, finding out that Patricia wasn't actually able to be convicted of anything. Because she had a solid alibi and she wasn't there. We get the scene <laughs> of the curandero, like, breaking in to steal some... Some La Rorona serum? Serum. I don't know. <laughs> Collecting bodily fluids at a crime scene. Which makes me think, like, how did this guy know which one was her tears and not? Because later it's revealed that he collected La Llorona's tears. Honestly, this could could have just been all shitty, dirty water. And he's could like, have been candle mm, wax. Tears. Yeah. <laughs> or dirty water. Just muddy, dirty ass water. He's like, mm, this is it right here. That's the one. I smell it. <laughs> Smells like mud. It's got to be them. So he takes a sample of La Llorona water. I cannot say La Llorona. La Llorona water. And then voice investigator What? Following a bunch of... The fuck did I write? <laughs> <laughs> Beef noise? <laughs> what did you write down? Beef noise ingredients. Beer... Oh, here noise investigates. So Anna starts to notice that her kids' marks are starting to look like the marks that she noticed on the boys at the beginning of the movie. I think it's the nighttime. She's looking the case over. After the cop friend has given her, like, the files on the case, she's looking it over at night. We get this, like, typical scene. It reminded me a lot of The Conjuring, mm. where the dad's noticing the doors open and close, and they're just walking around, and nothing, ha literally nothing happens. It's, it's just them walking through doors, and it's meant to be suspenseful, but But it just... wasn't. It just wasn't. We come across the typical, another trope that I think this universe loves, the creepy sleepwalking kid opening and closing the door, and it's him. Because... The Conjuring 1, Conjuring 2 all dealt with, like, the notion of a sleepwalking kid. So mm -hmm. I'm like, okay. Sleepwalking children, you just gotta tie them to the bed. No, I don't. think that's what they try to do in The Conjuring 2. I digress. She's following a bunch of swinging doors through the house until she finds out that Chris Isn't is trying to open the front door. But it's stopped, obviously, by the chain lock. She's like, what the hell? And he's not responding. She pulls him away, and he's still not responsive. The door slams open from the chain lock. She closes the door, and Chris passes out. He's back in bed. It's just, like, creepy stuff happening at night, allegedly. She grabs a bat and is yelling after seeing this entity in her room and through the mirror. It seems like the kids are also freaked out because they also can't see her. It's almost like the layout on it doesn't show everybody who's around at the same time. So, like, the kids are like, what the hell? Because they're freaked out by her holding this bat and screaming. And <laughs> But she's yelling at the, like, okay, if someone broke into my house, I wouldn't be like, what are you doing in my house? i just start Get yelling, out. Get the fuck out. Yeah. I have a vicious pit. <laughs> Rottweiler, German Shepherd mix, Starts and then Loki comes out trying to play with him, you know? Sniffing their crotch. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Terrified. <laughs> so Anna has a meeting with Patricia. In right? jail. But if Patricia wasn't accused, why is she in jail? That was my thing. They have nothing to hold her on if she has a solid alibi. I guess she could have been held for questioning. I mean, they are her children. So this is when we find out the whole backstory about how Patricia's like, I didn't pray to God, I prayed to La Llorona. I want to know how she started possessing them. Patricia mm -hmm. and her kids? Yeah, like, did she do something shitty? The whole premise is that Anna fucked up by assuming the kids were in a closet, though, so I don't really think she fucked up. No, as someone who's coming in from outside, it's a pretty good assumption to think something's going yeah. on Yeah. Unfortunately, through everything else that happens, it's not the case. It but, ends like, up being the wrong choice. If you're doing your job and you're like, hey, this looks like a fucked up situation, you're going to make your best decision and say yeah. this is not good. So I wonder how she started haunting Patricia. There's probably, like, pretty vengeful people who put it on Patricia. There's a lot of people who believe in that kind of stuff. Maybe she a also... Bad vibes. Maybe she also crossed somebody in. But that's not the story that La Llorona has. No one has ever... Like, you don't get brought up as a kid and like, La Llorona's gonna get you for having crossed this other person. La Llorona's gonna go get you if you're by yourself over there in the dark yeah. somewhere. It's not like you can curse somebody with La Llorona. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know. Who knows? That's the story this movie's telling is that you can like sick the Llorona on people. Anna's always walking in when the hauntings are happening. One of them is Chris falling down the stairs because she hears her crying. Yeah. La Llorona, not Sam, who he thinks is crying. So the hospital sees everyone is injured and they think she's been hurting them. So the cops kind of like, you can't be here because they're interrogating the kids to see like 
How's home? How are things going here? The fact that they all know each other is like, I don't think this would happen. They wouldn't this is like a people. conflict of interest. Right, especially if they call in Anna's co-worker. Her co-worker and then the detective who's there is her like family friend. After they leave, the mom's mm. like, can you tell me what happened while you fell down the stairs and sprained your arm? While this is going on, while like, Yorona's washing her daughter's hair for some fucking reason. <laughs> well, this part doesn't make sense to me either. Because if you pay attention, the little girl's in the little tub. And the door to the bathroom is on the opposite side of the room. And the little girl naturally thinks it's okay for these hands out of nowhere to come up and start massaging her and shampooing her hair. Uh But didn't see anyone under? You just assume it's your mom. No. Your mom never like snuck in behind you somewhere and you're like, oh shit. When the door is literally in front of you and you didn't see anybody come in. Uh I was a superstitious kid. I was scared of like everything. So you thought like Loki? Yeah, I was. The hands come out of nowhere and start massaging the little girl's head and then she starts drowning her. But downstairs they hear her. This is when the mom also gets burned. Yeah, she also gets grabbed and where we find out that doors stop La Llorona for some reason. Why though? Doesn't make sense. Yeah, the doors stop her. Is it because they're made out of wood? It's because she learned from the killer in Lucius Berea who also gets stopped by doors. (laughs) Okay, but that's a person. A (laughs) solid person. She's screaming and she's bashing it but she can't get past it. Doesn't make any sense. It doesn't. So this is one of those rare movies where the parent sees the haunting stuff right away and seeks help she goes back to the priest and is like yo you gotta help me Mm -hmm. they get this super dramatic scene where he's like the warrens are busy sorry there's a man who used to be a priest his methods are unorthodox you mean they couldn't get eduardo and lorena warren (laughs) (laughs) no they couldn't okay (laughs) they were busy (laughs) and they were like the priest is just like, his methods are unorthodox. I can't recommend him. He's a curandero. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like, <laughs> <laughs> we make that joke we every just, time. Let's get used to it, okay? <laughs> it was just so unnecessary. <laughs> it is. It almost seems like the actor himself was laughing. And like, this is ridiculous, <laughs> but I'm going to have fun delivering They made me do this. it. <laughs> Sorry, y'all. I had like two scenes in here. This is. I'm going to milk it. <laughs> yeah. They show him at a shop, and they show the curandero as kind of like an asshole. I think it's because he recognizes Anna from, like, the funeral. Then he notices the marks on the kid's hand, and he's like, oh, shit, you're possessed. That sucks. The little girl's like, please. And he's like, son of a bitch, I'm in. I'm in. And I'm like, (laughs) that's fucking weird. If a kid asked me for help, I'd be less likely to (laughs) <laughs> what are you? Damn. And then this is when we get the, the black eggs, black webble magic tricks. It's problematic because this is actually a thing that like... People Again, really I think do. someone did the bare minimum research and they're like, oh, they do this with eggs? It's a joke. I remember growing up and always hearing people say, oh, this is a curandero and he cracks an egg on your forehead. And that's always the joke. Always. It wasn't a joke. It's legit what they did. But there's also But there's things. reasons behind it and they're not like floating eggs full of black gunk. <laughs> And there's other things that they do. There's yeah, like that's other... not the main thing that they yeah. do. And it makes it seem like this dude's all about his eggs. <laughs> the whole time. It's just the only thing he does is the eggs. And then the anti-venom later. But <laughs> yeah. we'll talk about that. It's interesting how this is a thing that people believe in. My dad had cancer, but in the beginning, there was belief that there was a spell or a curse put on him. I told you the story about the lemons. Vinegar? Oh, yes. I've seen that um, done yeah. before. You put lemons in vinegar and nothing really happens. But these lemons would turn black because they're supposed to absorb the negative energy and there's a lot of things like that it's uncanny it's yeah it's <laughs> uncanny you don't necessarily have to believe it but it is kind of fucking weird it's interesting and i think at the end of the day it comes down to what makes you feel better when we talk about being sick and whatnot is that sometimes it's mental there's a lot to do with positive energy and how positive mentality can help your body heal if you feel like something is working because of that mental positivity and the way you feel it could work. It's like, it's weird. I did this as a science project in elementary school. In elementary school? I did. It was about the collective consciousness and how minds working together individually, although unconsciously, can make something happen. Oh, I've heard of this. Yeah, it's like, uh, actually Johnny helped me do this. It's like the collective unconscious is a thing as well. Yeah, the experiment was, because he had a coffee shop at the time, people hate pumpkin spice lattes. He had the coffee shop and he said people hated them, yeah. And he said that if enough people come in here asking for a pumpkin spice latte and say they want a pumpkin spice latte, and people are like thinking like, I want a pumpkin spice latte, more people will come in thinking, I want a pumpkin spice latte because of all the like the positivity around wanting to have a pumpkin spice okay, latte. Okay, so so many people listen to this podcast. So many people listen to this podcast. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> so many. That out there. All of them? All of the people. No, it's like, this is actually really popular right now, like manifesting and things like that. I don't know if you've seen it, but it's no. like everywhere. People manifesting good things, like vision boards and things like that are like really popular. And it's just all about like visualizing what you want. And like you said, the positive energies. How did we get on this? That we're just not egg people? We got on it about how the curandero's trope is that he just does egg shit. And yeah. there's more to it than that. And how I hate that. That's kind of what's shown. Because when you think of Mexican witch doctors, this is what people make fun of us for. I've heard it enough times to make fun of me in the past. Oh, your people just crack eggs on things to fix them. First of all, I'm not a good in the middle. <laughs> Second First of, all, of all, not me. Yeah. Second of all, that's not what all they do. You know? Yeah. That's like one of my issues with this movie. Just yeah. the making fun of things that they probably didn't research that well. No. I mean, look, if you think they did, tell us why. I can't believe that a Hollywood movie wouldn't necessarily have someone do the research. Uh, you know what I mean? No, there are so many no, Hollywood no, movies I, that don't no. do the research. I know that's the case. I'm just saying that, like, if they did, tell us, tell us, like, tell us what they did. What did they do? Who Wikipedia did you talk to? To find our fun facts today, all I did was go through a couple of sites and I was like, what sounds interesting? Honestly, you know what I did? I searched La Llorona Legends and I looked and I got a shit ton of English articles and I was like, no, nay, nay. I'm going to go... <laughs> In Spanish, and I'm going to find some Mexican articles. And like I'm going to take that, because folklore. those are the people who know the feral stuff. Yeah, they're not going to just take whatever BuzzFeed says, right? Like, it's <laughs> going to be actual shit that, that they went and researched. And so that's why we had a lot of, like, Mayan and other deity yeah. stories for this section. If you're going to do this stuff, do it for real. Like, go and make this movie in Mexico. And have people who are actually Mexican play the roles and who are fluent and just dub We're it. experts commentating, helping with the film. Like, yeah. with the, the craft. Yes, how Faruka Bulk was actually a Wiccan. And, and they got a, They hired actual other Wiccans to make it accurate. Like, yeah. this is very clearly just a cash grab movie. And then let's throw it into the Warrenverse, too. Yeah. And I feel like this story has the potential to be actually very scary, and they don't make it that way. The disrespect. Yes. Shout out to Brenda. Our friend <laughs> Brenda is the one who suggested this film, actually, because she hated it so much. And yeah. she said it was the most disrespectful movie she's ever seen. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And Brenda loves our culture. So if she says it's disrespectful, it's disrespectful. Really meant, yeah. yeah. But anyway, so yeah, we get a bunch of, what did they say that it was on Carson? The eggs thing. Anna is like, yeah, this is a trick. I saw it on Carson. And then funny Lady, enough. you've seen a ghost. <laughs> right. Why do you think this is a trick? She's like, bullshit. Show me the I draw the, the line at black eggs. <laughs> <laughs> but then they talk about this fire tree cross out of nowhere because they're like, did the trees that witnessed La Llorona murdering her children reach and, and they wept for her children or something like that then he brings tahin puts it on the windows and doors mm -hmm. tahin just kidding it's like seeds from the fire the trees. trees i kept calling it tahin and for the rest of my notes i call it tahin it looks like tahin for those of you who don't know what tahin is it's like a spicy brimming salt for your tequilas it's for fruit it's for <laughs> and everything your fruit. yeah ice cream so the tears of lo llorona he says this is end venom it's like our last resort and, and then we get this weird conversation where he's like after he's rigged the house with candles and all these things tahin and tahin <laughs> <laughs> and tequila he is like it's comfort food i'm making you comida for this whole and we're like why did they feel the need to like add that sentence in here i don't want to diminish that although we are being represented more let's say in this film I, are I, we though when the lead is the, a white family that's kind of what i'm saying is that like i know that there are people who are like well at least they like brought in a mexican story to this war in verse or like yeah there's more representation about hispanics latinos latinx latinas right and yeah, but I hate when it's like emphasized forcefully. Yeah, not authentic. In that, in that, like, I could tell you, hey, I really like this movie. But instead, they like are like, well, to imply that they're Hispanic in case no one knew, let's make them say, Spanish I really words. like this película. <laughs> yeah, it's like, let's have them say Spanish words in the middle yeah. of it, just to imply that in case no one got it, they're Mexican. You see, didn't get it. Not the main people, though. We're not like that Mexican, just the like extras. Yeah. <laughs> So that's kind of what I mean. You still got to like, appeal to American like, I mean, audiences. I, I love it. Sure. Yeah. Please. More representation. But also like, do bro, it well. like we also speak English. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> what ends up being funny about that is that this actor actually does not speak Spanish well. No, he doesn't. So like you also could have gotten somebody who did. Who actually knew Spanish. <laughs> or you could have just had the whole cast speak Spanish and made it in Mexico. I'm not going to drop that. I love that idea. You know what? Let's make our own La La Rona movie. And the theme song in Spanish is going to be La 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 Rona. La La Rona. <laughs> yes. 
but the whole rest of the movie is gonna be like correctly spoken Spanish. Yes. But La Llorona is gonna be. But every time so. in the middle of their sentence, they're gonna say La Llorona, <laughs> <laughs> just so they know that they speak English. I, you know, funny enough, in novelas when you watch them, they do also do the same. Oh the my opposite. god, I <laughs> hate in novelas when they make like the actor be like American and he's speaking the worst English you've ever heard in your life. Yeah, so I guess, yeah, I don't know, that kind of counterproves my point in that they do the same in Spanish where they're like, but no, they, I hate when they do this too because they'll be like, to imply that they're intelligent, they know how to speak English. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. To imply that they're smart, they're like, they know English. They've got some very, like, internalized racism, colorism going on. Yeah. Yeah, Fix we don't got to talk about that right now, though. No. Let's talk about how okay. terrible this movie is. <laughs> She's here, ritual starts, and the They're in the middle of blown. all these candles. Mm-hmm. Candles don't do nothing. They hear her scream. Candles all blow out. She comes down and then yanks the fuck out of Anna in the middle of them because she's holding the two kids. Mm -hmm. And they look up. There's a lot of like, just she comes out of nowhere and then just yanks people. The kids run. La Llorona appears through the cover of the table because the kids are underneath. And she takes Chris. She starts to drag Chris across the room because Raphael had some eye contact with the kids. And he backed away into the corner looking like he was going to abandon them. He did. The kid gets pulled around the entire house and Raphael comes out of nowhere and throws the antivenom. I think that's another thing that bothers me. Raphael looks like the bad guy for like a minute. They would have never done this with Ed Warren. No. They would have never had him look like the villain for like a minute. Nope. But the curandero can look like the villain. They're like, the curandero is sketchy as fuck, so let's make him sketchy by sketchy doing as this. Fuck. The Warrens are sketchy. When you want to come actually research their history, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you said, oh, well, at least they're representing our stories now. The reason they're doing these is because they actually don't have the rights to a lot of cases they were involved with. Like the Amityville horror, they do not have the right to that. They're, that was probably one of their biggest cases. When you say like, oh, Hollywood's giving us representation or whatever. Guillermo del Toro wins an Oscar almost every other year for his horror films. And oh, it's not like he makes his characters a certain way, no. you know? It's not like, it's like, this is a Mexican horror film. It's just, this is a horror film. The director film, was Mexican, and that's which it. I think is how it should be. I agree. I do want to point out that the Guillermo del Toro Museum in Guadalajara. Oh, I would like to I go. would love to go there. When I saw it there... Even the outside looks really cool. You didn't get to go in? We were there at night and just going to a bar and stuff like that. Mm. There's not enough time, but we should go back. Oh, hell yeah. Yeah. We're talking about him using Chris's bait because he has the antivenom. Which is her tears. (laughs) Which is her tears. And he throws them at her and is like, you can't come in here anymore. And drops the seeds from the trees and saw her weep. Tahin. We get it. I'm just going to keep saying Tahin, okay? Take a shot every time. Yes, please do. With some Tahin. (laughs) With some Tahin. And lemon. (laughs) Lime. It is a stressful part in the movie because he's like banished her and it's like, she can't cross this line. And the little girl, the little dumb girl is like, but my doll's outside the line of this. Oh my God. And this is probably the most stressful scene in this entire movie. Not Not because it's scary, because you want to smack this kid. (laughs) Just so dumb. Like, what are you doing? You've literally seen everything horrible that this entity can do and you're still like willing to risk it all. Let's also point out that this doll is a Raggedy Ann doll, which also is an allusion to Annabelle. Like an Annabelle, Annabelle, yeah. Which is the real Annabelle doll, yeah. Fun fact. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, I didn't know we were doing Easter eggs in the Warren verse, but I guess yeah, we are. Yeah, we got Scooby Doo Velma, we got yeah. uh, Annabelle, Annabelle. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's super long. It's super dumb. Because you know of... she's going to mess up. And she does. She gets taken to the pool. The mom's chasing her in the water. Raphael does this like thing where he drops. It looks like salt. But I think it's we... It's Epsom salt. It's Epsom for salt. For healing. It's just <laughs> for some self-care. <laughs> I think we learned in our exorcist episode that it's anointed with holy oil. So this doesn't really make sense. Some uh, some finger. Some finger oil, which he does. He does <laughs> stick his fingers in there. But he, he makes the pool water holy water with a prayer where we learn that... He he does not actually speak Spanish that yeah. well. He sanctifies it mm-hmm. and saves them. Dude, you're literally dealing with an entity that drowns children. What did that be the first thing you do when you gotta, get there? Got to sanctify the river. Got to sanctify every water in the whole world. Now that the Yorana can't do anything. Probably would just need to. <laughs> he did sanctify her tears too. That's why it's the antivenom, right? Yeah. Probably just would need to do that in her vicinity. And then we talked about, like, how does she get these kids to bodies of water? Is she just, like, sprinting against football fields, having the kid in her arm in her wedding dress? (laughs) Yeah. If you guys have seen on TikTok that trend where you put your face on the little girl running through the castle. The woman, yeah. Yeah, I was like, it's just her just running with the kids in Mm -hmm. their hands. Yeah. That's her. We should probably do, like, a TikTok if we can put her face on it. So she's, 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 he's, what? (laughs) It's so funny. La Llorona on her way to drown some kids. (laughs) the river <laughs> let's do it I swear to God, that'd be so funny 
in the pool is where she pulls the necklace off her, or maybe not. They already had it. Don't know. This was a mistaken post, or we just like missed the details. The and he's like, trance. save it. It might come into play later because her daughter's in a trance mm-hmm. and trying to go out to her, and and they lock them in the closet, and it's like the beginning again. Where there were so many like, it's over, it's not over, it's over. Oh, it's not over. And I was yeah. Like, they just not know how to end this. And I'm like, when did it start? <laughs> this is not scary. <laughs> so they leave them in there, and their one job, Anna and the curandero Rafael. You would think. Their one job is to protect these kids and wait outside. And they wait downstairs away from the closet. And plot twist, out of nowhere, Patricia is back. You don't know it's her, though. You think La Llorona has made her way in and... They hear the noise. They hear the noise. But when you see her, it's Patricia. And this is what I mean about vilifying the only Latino characters in this movie. Like, Anna seriously did some damage to her life. And they make her come in like a crazy killer. It looks like she shoots... Raphael in like the neck and the shoulder like no yeah. hesitation she's like take them kids it's the only way to bring back my kids she's becoming the monster in her own sense or whatever mm-hmm. they were going for she grabs the kids and then just like strikes her leg through the, the tahin, l- lets la Llorona in la Llorona runs in and grabs anna and Locks throws her, away. her into the closet and the kids how did they escape patricia they run up to but, the attic or something why did patricia get knocked out because Patricia's, like, knocked the fuck out at this point. Was it the layout on like, just runs She in. ran in and, like, her chaos knocked everyone out. The kids run up to the attic. It's this non-tense scene where he's trying to fumble with the attic opening. Mm-hmm. They're yeah. in there. Chris has the necklace because he took it from his mom somehow. Yeah. And they're closing the door. The door to the attic stops her. She finally gets in and she can move things with her mind. But not but open, doors? open door. I thought the same thing. It's like all the things that they hide behind are just moving aside perfectly and softly and slowly. Yet she can't get through this door. Chris holds up the necklace. For some reason knows that this necklace is important. And La Llorona appears normal. Yeah. Not, How she did in the beginning. Not like a spirit. Sad. Uh, but she starts to cry black tears. Mm-hmm. Accidentally, Samantha pulls down this sheet that's on top of this mirror and it comes down and she looks at herself and it goes back to her crazy self. Being evil and, and the it mirror cracks, cracks again for some reason. I, I don't understand the cracking of mirrors with the spirit. I don't either. Is that part of... Like, she's a drowning demon. I'm assuming she sees her reflection in the water all the fucking time. Yeah, I mean, did you hear my fun facts? There were no mirrors. At this point, Patricia has, like, realized she fucked up. What if this was, like, a way to say, like, Bloody Mary and La Llorona are the same thing? Which I thought about and would piss me off. Because they're not. Because they are not. They are two completely different stories and two completely different origins. Look, one's Mary. And one's Maria. Yeah. <laughs> there's a difference. But in all seriousness, I thought they were trying to, like, make her seem like, oh, this is just the Mexican Bloody Mary. Which at that point, just make a Bloody Mary movie. Why bring us into it? Anyway. Representation, bro. <laughs> Bro. <laughs> so, uh, everyone has come to, basically. Yeah, she texts everybody because everybody's in the attic. And then Raphael because gets knocked Patricia back. Patricia has her, like, redemption moment, like, go save your kids. No uh, reason. No reason, just because probably she hears, hears the kids screaming or whatever. We realize Raphael's not dead. He didn't. He got shot in the shoulder. He's trying to go up to her with the cross, and she blows him back, so he throws it at Anna. And then here's, like, this weird scene where she's also suddenly a vampire. I guess this makes sense with the doors. Hit her and, in the chest with the cross. Yeah, and she, like disintegrates in this some is sort scene of way. This saying was pretty cool. It's probably the coolest effect, but it's not that great. Her body dissolves in a whirlwind of yes. bloody, muddy, Tears. teary. Yeah, her skeleton's the last thing and then it just disappears, which is cool. Sure, but <laughs> not enough to save this whole movie. Amen. Amen. Yay, problem solved. It's the next day, it's morning. Raphael's getting into the cab. Why, why <laughs> are his wounds dressed over his shirt? <laughs> Why? That would only infect your wounds more. <laughs> the kids did it. The kids. He did it. They're trying to say that curanderos don't actually know how to care themselves. No, he didn't know what to do with the eggs. So he just was like, look, this all this cloth. Over me. my shirt. <laughs> Who is the special effects person in this movie? And then we get the scene where the kids are like, you know, everything's it's back over. to normal. They run back into the house. And the scene where Anna's like looking over a puddle because it rains the entire time of this movie. And it's like ominous music playing. We get the creepy lullaby and scene in credits. I don't know what the hell that means. Yeah, because you don't see her face or anything. I'm assuming it just means that she's, she's not She's never going to trust puddles ever again. 
Oh. <laughs> She's not, like, fully defeated, and she'll live on to haunt another family. Mm. So we're going to get a La Llorona 2. I, I think this movie was not that well-received that we will. I mean, La Llorona 2, the prequel. We like, love doing prequels. And that one should take place in Mexico. You hear it? Her origin you story. You hear this? It should be them and Moctezuma. Not these <laughs> suburban people. No. In America. In America. Well, well, that, that was, was that. La Llorona. That was a tough one. Hope you enjoyed that because we didn't. Well, then, what would you rate this movie? I would rate it a three. More generous than I am. I'm gonna yeah. give it a two out of ten. Here's the thing: like the acting wasn't terrible. It was just such a bad storyline. It was a bad storyline. They were like, "Let's make this part of the Warren verse, and more people will come watch it." Yes, for sure. Let's just tie it together with one scene. No, it's not good. It's not good. It's not scary. No, it's not scary. I think I could forgive so much bad plot if it was actually like some good scary scenes, and it's not. Thanks for trying, I guess. I don't think they tried that hard. No. And that's well, that's that. <laughs> <laughs> that's that. Let's go watch it if you want. If you want. I mean, I don't fucking well, recommend it. But. What scared Loki about this movie? Everything for some reason. Because uh, he, he knew it was bad. <laughs> Everything in this movie scared him. No rhyme or reason. He just was like, everything sucks. I hate this. Are the sirens, this? the raining, the lightning, mm-hmm. the kids screaming, La Llorona crying. The crying, the sniffling. He didn't like that. All of it. Just off. He was off. So, Loki, did you also not like this movie? I thought so. We agree. I'll give you some tahin in your cheek next time. <laughs> Keep you away from La Llorona. That was we, it. That's pretty much it for yeah. us this week. Let's go. So, as always, we hope you guys had a good time here. You can follow us pretty much anywhere at Shaken Not Scared Pod. You can send us an email at Shaken Not Scared Pod at gmail.com. Twitter is Shaken Scared Pod. And you can support the show on Patreon. We'll name our next drink after you with mentions on our website where the drink page will live forever. You can listen to us on all your favorite podcasting sites, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google, Stitcher, a bunch of others. Give us a listen. Give us a follow. A like, a rate, a review, a share, whatever you want to do. Okay, thanks. Bye. Bye. Check out With Nothing to Say by Life Through Fiction Productions. They do complete deep dives of all sorts of movies per episode. Most recently, The Man Who Killed Don Quixote. Butch Don Cassidy. Don Quixote. Yeah. Don but- Quixote. Don Quixote. Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid and Stardust Memories. You can learn more at lifethroughfiction.com. Thanks. Bye.